I box a head jokes. All right, what is this episode six? I believe episode of Dark Side Thoughts, our review of Dark Side of the Ring for the episode of Herb Abrams and UWF. Pretty good episode. We're here with uh, uh, Mr. Alex. I don't know which way to, to point him, but he's here. Yeah, it doesn't matter, really. <laughs> he's really he's, he's well, we can show up anywhere. It doesn't matter. Yeah, we can just <laughs> acknowledge ourselves as you call our names. Exactly, exactly. E, Bando, he's here. And Tev, the Destroyer, he is here as well. So. I don't know why I had like a little bullshit accent, but <laughs> I guess it happened. Either way, we're here to talk about Herb Abrams. Um... I knew nothing about this guy. I knew nothing about any of this that happened. Nothing at all. Nothing I want to know where where can I find any of these um, matches. Well, I thought nobody... you were going to go for like where you could find the coke. But continue, please. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm good on that. I'm, I'm good just on that. We'll do with the coke. <laughs> right, shit, Herb got it all. <laughs> Herb got it all. Um, Herb had it all. Yeah, had it all. He definitely had it all. Um, I, I want to start with the the press conference that he did at the wrestle event at the at the weekend wrestling event, which was called um, Weekend of Champions with John Arezzi, who's like he was the first one to do like the the weekend events, which pretty like- much was like a Starcast technically. Yeah. it's the first yeah. Starcast that we probably ever known of, which is pretty fucking actually- cool. It is. It is to see that it only took place in the fucking nineties. Yeah. Like I would think it would have been a lot further in time. Like, in the eighties. I thought it might have taken place in the eighties with all the fucking like shit that Vince had going on. You had Snooker, you had Andre the Giant, Hulk Hogan and all that shit. Like that's like I'm surprised it took that long to actually happen. So the first iteration, not like a um Starcade, but like or Starcast, yeah, Starcast. But like no it I'm surprised it took that long, and that's pretty cool that he actually put that. Yeah, he's kind of a trailblazer in that <laughs> he actually is the first one to do it. I'm surprised we haven't had more of that that we know of outside of StarCast. Um, shit, it was a lot of people there. As far as big names, he <laughs> he he got um, a lot of people as far as like Foley to be on his in his roster. That's one of the big things that like blew my mind. Like you have you have Foley, you have um but was that Foley, one time. Was Foley yeah. like big as big as he was like when he was over there? Well Foley, I think that was the beginning of his uh Cactus Jack persona. Right. No, yeah, he like, had matches at that point too, up at that point. Yeah, I think, yeah, I think he was, I don't know. I think he was, because I know he was uh, Cactus Jack in WCW as well. So, I don't know. That that timeline is really, really sketchy because they say it starts in the 90s, but it's just, what were the contracts like? Even though it was like a shitty company, well, not a shitty company, but <laughs> shitty management for the company. It's like, what were the contracts? Could they, did they have the freedom to go everywhere else? Because they were saying that, like, they had the freedom to just improvise as far as stories go. So, like, that's one thing that that kind of threw me off. Like, what is really happening with the contracts? Are they uh, only to be utilized there and nowhere else at the time? Or after the contract, they can go somewhere else and be utilized there? So that kind of threw me off. But they, you pretty much had every, like, a lot of people from like trying to get out of the out of the 80s into the 90s and try to figure out that flow of things because like i said they had they had so many people they had bob orton they had paul orndorff dr death they had um jay strongbow so they had a lot of people it's just like how (laughs) how did like how could you fuck that up well (laughs) how i mean it was you said it, they didn't have the manager, they didn't have like, they didn't have fil- those filters 
to like set them up for success because sometimes you need filters and it wasn't any of that like he was out of control and if maybe he had a more of a team around him that could like reel him in it probably could have gone a little bit further what do you I think oh no go ahead e. what was the question again I'm sorry <laughs> like how like how do you think it was so easy for him to fuck everything up when he had so many, so many superstars and they had, and the superstars had the freedom? Like, how, why, why do you think it was so easy for him to mess that up? Because cocaine's one hell of a drug. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's definitely true. Honestly well, speaking, he's, he's right. Because, like, the thing is, one definitely has to do with the cocaine. What he was about living his life to the fullest. Let's be let's be honest about it. He was about the cocaine, he loved the hookers and whatever. But like a lot of that stuff like made him feel like bigger than life. Like he was already a millionaire. So he was like fuck it. He didn't care. He owned I forgot what it was that he owned, but like he he had some retail stores and shit, right? Well, um, big girl, big girl now. Exactly. Yeah, this is for the, for the BBWs. Yeah, don't yeah, back for the BBWs. Call them luck so, and curvaceous. Yeah. Okay. But, uh, <laughs> paid, paid for all his cocaine. No, facts. So, like, the thing is, when you get to that state of, fuck it, I'm already rich, I have this thing, like, I want to be the next Vince McMahon, the thing is, he tried to go from, he didn't even go through the crawling phase, he just went straight running, and it just, it seemed like the good idea at the time, even for the wrestlers that were, like, on board with it. They, were, they just heard all the shit. They were like, yeah, this is going to be fucking awesome. Like, he has the money. He has the vision. The thing is, he didn't build it up properly. Like, as he didn't go to the seat. He, he went to a fucking 17,000 seat arena for his first pay-per-view without having much of a following. I had, like, what, 300 people, 400 people there? Yeah. No, yeah. that was like, for the comeback show at the MGM. No, but there was the same thing. Damn near the same thing at the fucking at their first pay per view. They did like a hundred pay per view buys. Like, a, like a it was a point zero one. Point yeah. zero one. Yeah. Yeah. So but like still was was nobody like showing up. Instead of that, but that was his thing. Instead of establishing the, instead of establishing it, like little by little, and like building your base, and you know. Doing what WWE did and or WWE up at the time did over a long term, at least like ten years, um, he just tried to go. He just tried to match WWE stride for stride. Like the fact that he got Andre the Giant in for one, for one match day. was a big, fuck, but it's still a big fucking deal and embarrassing yeah. to Vince McMahon. Like, how could he get Andre the Giant? That's like if AEW were to pull Triple H or one of their, or to get Seth Rollins or some shit on AEW for one fucking day, that one day is enough. Yeah. It should you be know? enough. It, it should, should be. be enough. It should. And it wasn't utilized. It was it doesn't need to be promoted, but, well, he doesn't need to be promoted, but the show needs to be promoted and it wasn't. Like, that I don't understand because it just shows that he had no no promotional skills and he had no relationship skills as far as being with the people. Like, come on. All you really have to do is get a street team. That's what I was saying. I was saying, like, why isn't there more of, like, a management team or, like, a promotional team or something to be around him to kind of, like, reel them in? I mean, that's the thing. Yeah. I think it comes down to him already being a multi-millionaire owner of retail operations and this and that. Like, he knew how to deal with that stuff. And he probably thought, like, hey, if I could do that, if I could sell clothes to, like, the big luscious ladies, <laughs> as you so eloquently put it, um, <laughs> I can I can sell wrestling because wrestling is just wrestling. And not that he wasn't a fan because he clearly was a fan of it. Um, and he clearly kept trying to be like Mr. McMahon being in the actual show and you know, interviewing and becoming part of storylines. But at the same time, like, it's just, he he was just out of his depth, honestly, because he didn't know the inner workings of how certain things work for the most part. So, yes, you can have the money, but, yeah. I mean, it's not always going to translate to, hey, like, this is the next hot shit. Look at AEW. Like, they carefully, meticulously looked at what, what they've all done in their careers and took bits and pieces from everywhere else and like made it to something where it would stick for a while because and got gets yeah. a larger um fan base because of the fact that like hey 
way they all wanted wrestling to go back to basics and that's one thing that like really came out big for me when they said that like we just wanted wrestling to go back to basics that's what um uwf uwf right yeah uwf was supposed to be about and that's what AEW pretty much said when they were first coming out yo we want to go back to basics we want to be wrestling we want to do this we want to do that like and it kind of when he when they said that in the in the episode i was like huh i was like they actually and they probably learned from the mistakes of uwf too because it's just like everyone because i mean now you have ring of honor now you have like impact and all that shit like they've learned to not go that route don't get too big for your britches pretty much but i think it was also like the lack of respect because no one knew who he was like one of the guys i believe i forgot his name i think it was um marty uh marty yes yesberg he was saying that he like it was just stories about this guy it was just stories uh about a mark with money like that start that wants to start a TV show. Didn't say a wrestling promotion, just said a TV show. So that's probably part of like my earlier question is like the contracts. Like it, it was probably just performance based as opposed to uh, long term or gimmick based. Probably. I mean, he was burning through money regardless. Like just... he had two accounts. <laughs> <laughs> Which is smart, but not like he had control to an extent. But, but it turns out like he's burning through shit that isn't his money either. You know what I mean? Like after a while, so he said he was an investor too. So and exactly, he was using other people's monies to fund that. So that's where the problem came. Yeah. Um, oh. I I just think it was a very <laughs> interesting <laughs> and cool. <obviously. laughs> um, the Coke stories were funny, actually. They like, were pretty fucking. Funny. It, it it was some of the funniest things like. I heard, I mean, obviously for the wrestler that, like, had to watch him have sex with two hookers, like, high-class escorts. That, that was, was uh, he, Oh, my God. He was the biggest square. But I'm not mad. Like, some, like it's okay to be a square. But... It is. <laughs> he was just saying... <laughs> he was just saying, like, yo, like, I didn't know what to do. I wanted to get out of there. It was like a fucking porno shoot. <laughs> See, back in the day, like now, we probably would just like take out the camera and just be like, uh huh, keep going. Yeah, yeah, we'll stop. <laughs> like, yeah. we'll stop. keep going. We'll but, um, or something. <laughs> not even, you just upload it straight to Pornhub or something. I would not but... <laughs> open the camera. <laughs> <laughs> You'd have been like, I need another mirror. <laughs> the funniest thing was when he was just like, yo, I don't... he was like, these weren't any like, just regular snaggle tooth hookers. I was like, oh my god. I was like, how you say that about like when he was like, these were high class escorts. I was like, damn. I was like, you fucking crazy. That and goes then, like, to show where he's from though. They were in uh, And the time. It's true. It's true. Hey, there's lo- level set uh, to hookers, man. Yeah. Oh, there yeah. are? Absolutely. Go to Hunts Point and then go to Vegas. <laughs> it's the difference. <laughs> <laughs> well, you got to be on the right strip of Vegas. <laughs> this is true as well. I saw some five dollar flyers, and I was like, mm, 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 "Don't worry, five dollar babies." Don't. Vegas, we talking poor quality. I'm just saying. <laughs> well, yeah, yeah, obviously, yeah. <laughs> oh man, are there any like what? Do, what do you think he could have done better? Like besides the obvious, like you know, like having a team with him that'll help him through the processes of like growing it bigger because it did have the potential like it did because of the names he was pulling but the problem was just like how what route back then could he have taken to like actually establish it do you think he was too far gone with just like all the coke and hookers and trying to please everybody and trying to like prove something to everybody or just like what do you think he could have done Go ahead, e. I don't think he gave a fuck about anybody, to be honest. <laughs> I think he was just, you know, too strung out. He he was a little man, you know, he what was what's that um saying? Napoleon man complex in the little man's body. Napoleon yeah, complex? Napoleon yeah. complex. You know, they said it in the beginning, like, you know, he wanted to be to to dominate over everybody. He wanted to crush Vince. I think that didn't come 
come about until um, when they did uh, WrestleMania Nine in Vegas. I think that's when it really started sh- to show when like he really got crazy about his fucking snakeskin boots. Well, he wanted to one up him when he got shut down by Vince, like because he went to Vince yeah. like, "Yo, you know, let's let's like work something out, blah blah." And then um, Vince was like, "Yeah, fuck out of here." Um, as so Vince wants to do. Yeah. yeah. So, question, like, bro, question. Let me ask you something. Do you think he pulls the the cowboy boots off though? <laughs> really, I don't know Absolutely anyone who not. does. Even Cody does Rose doesn't pull even pull them off. Hey, go to, go to Nashville. I, I, I've been in Nashville and I've seen people rocking the boots and I'm like, ah, right, you got it. Like, it, it was, you just gotta, you have to have a certain swag to be able to rock the fucking cowboy boots. I'm not even gonna lie. Like, no, yeah, you I, can't just go and I pull on the fucking too. You gotta be it, able to Ted Mosby. You, you have it, you know? to. You can't, you can't Ted Mosby it though. That's the thing. You can't, because Ted, <laughs> Ted Mosby looked like a fucking idiot half the time. <laughs> <laughs> You gotta, there, there's a certain, like he said, height for sure. Like, if I see, I'm sorry, but if I see a less than average height person wearing cowboy boots, I'd be like, mm. <laughs> like, they're gonna come up to his knees. Like Chang. Like, nah. like Chang from The Hangover, because that's who, that, that's like who? immediate Chang from The Hangover. Chow. Chow. Yeah. Chow. Chow. That's, Chow. Ex- that's exactly uh, what I thought. That's connected. Did he? No, he didn't. You're still here for me. Right. He had boots on. He had huge... No, he's there, but his... What's going on? Well, <laughs> everybody's, like, going out of video. Not for me. Everything's fine. Yeah, all see each other? Because I don't see... Yeah. yeah, yeah, that's weird. Are you on your phone again? No, I'm not. Ah, there you go. Yeah, I came back. I don't oh. know what happened. I don't know. Sorry. Like, my, yeah, I just, like, immediately, like, cut off real quick, and then, yeah, we're all gone. And then, yeah, all just came back, like, 10 seconds later. That was weird. Um, must have been an internet spike or something. Uh, but, yeah, that's what he reminded not- me of. He, rem- he reminded me of Chow from The Hangover. Like, short. Oh, motherfucker. Yeah, it's short. <laughs> kind of angry. Coked up. You fuck on me? That's pretty <laughs> much what he was doing to fucking Vince. You fuck on me? <laughs> Trying. <laughs> <laughs> he didn't get a pass hangover one. Uh, <laughs> um I want some I want to, I really want to taste the cookies. Oh, I want to taste they called? Um I don't I don't remember the Herbie don't they had they had the Herbie, Herbie cookies. Herbie. Everyone had their Everybody had like a cookie named after them like a a poor no what was it not poor was it? Uh, what was it, was, it? it was Stevie Ray. I mean, that's Stevie, Stevie Ray c- cookies. Yeah. Um, it wasn't something like, you know, a, a pun. You know. It was just um, Stevie Ray cookies? That's what it was called. Huh. Just like that, Stevie Ray cookies. Yeah, well, yeah, it was just super regular. I think it, the name, they were Herbie cookies. Yeah, it, yeah, he had the best, the best worst name for a cookie. <laughs> but I don't know, like, it could have worked, but... Who, it didn't for numerous reasons. Like, it all comes down to promotion in relationships. Like, That's nobody true. nobody trusted him. Nobody, like, he wasn't around the locker rooms or anything like that. Okay, so he just left. Um, he just left. Cops came. <laughs> I don't know. I'm always going to say the cops came. But... I think so, too. Hopefully not. Hopefully he's good, though. But, he, like, I don't, I don't know. Like, it could, like, you don't promote the cookies. You don't promote the pay per views. You don't promote the regular shows. Like everything was just wrong with his his management style. Like you can't, and I get it. Like when you manage retail stores, it's not the same. You can it's have not. somebody else manage. Like they're not gonna they're not gonna work for their money if they don't have to. Because the thing is, like you talk, you're saying how like he didn't manage it properly, which I 100 percent agree. The thing is, like, he, for example, when he started the pay-per-view thing, he picked a city an hour out of the way out of the next major city, Miami in Florida, that yeah. nobody was going to really show up to because one, I'm, I'm who the fuck lives there? Yeah. Two, not to, you know, shit on anybody that lives there, but like, I forgot the but name of the place. Time. Um, but at the time, yeah, it was a pretty much like, it's an out-of-the-way city. 
that, or town that nobody knows about, and it's 17,000 17, um, capacity arena that he only picked because WWE would do shows there. Yeah, and like, he was yeah, really trying. Were, he was really like, just riding the coattails of the WWE. WWE he was. Time. Like, that's he all was. it was. And that's fine. But it all comes down to relationship building for people in the town and <laughs> promotion. Everything that he didn't do was everything that he did wrong. Uh, he wasn't he wasn't smart about the venues. Like if he just kept it in the smaller venue, venues. The choice was terrible. Yeah, yeah. Minimum like six thousand, five thousand even. He could have definitely built something and built some traction. work around it. Because like if you, you look at like how AEW does it, like they pick yeah. something within five thousand to ten thousand people in the mm-hmm. arena and that's it. And if they don't sell out, you know, you could dim the lights easier. Yeah. It's it's fine. Like there's yeah. ways around it to Make but but you can't dim those TV. lights the same way. You saw how they was dimming those lights. Those are lights. You, <laughs> <couldn't> even, <laughs> you could see, you couldn't see shit outside anyone. of the ring. You couldn't I mean, see shit outside of the ring. Look at where Monday Night Raw started. They were at the Manhattan Center for years exactly. up until like they were. 97, 98. So like, and what's that, 2,500? About. I think so, just about. Yeah. About, just about. We've been in there quite a few times. Like, yeah. so you have the floor seats. And then you have the balconies. It's about, yeah, about 2,500. Sorry. Wow. That's like, that's a really big difference. Like, he could have sold something out like the Hammerstein. Maybe. Easily. And if not sold it out, he could have made that shit look good enough. Yeah. For TV, at least. And that's what it is. Like, just getting too big for your britches. Like, you, you just think you're hot shit. Yes, you want to compete with Vince, which... Anybody's gonna want to compete with Vince, but at the same time, it's like slow and steady wins the race. Exactly, take it easy. Don't rush out. Like he pretty much would false start every time. Like, and then you try to do the MGM Grand. Like (laughs) that's great, but like the MGM Grand holds like fucking six, fifteen to seventeen thousand people too. We were at the MGM Grand. Either way, yes, it's from at least ten. Yeah, so it's like we were at the MGM Grand. That shit was sold out and mad fucking and people. Like, there, what, so 12, 000, right? Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah, about that. 10, 10 to 15. Yeah. Ten to, in between 10 and 15. But it's just like, bro, if you would have just taken it slow and like Tev said, like do the smaller arenas, do the circuits and like at the little, like, at, like, at like daily place or something like that. Obviously it wasn't there, but like stuff like that, like it would have made more sense to like build your following. But he just... He you know just what? ran before he could walk, honestly. The craziest thing to me is that everyone knew every time they walked into an arena or wherever or a stadium, wherever they were at, little place that they would like that they were performing in, they just knew like this wasn't gonna happen. Nah, yeah. Like how everyone knew it wasn't gonna happen except for this one guy who had the power and money to do it the right job but didn't. He sold them a dream, honestly. Yeah. yeah. He sold them a dream, and that's what it comes down to. Like, it's just, you you want to be able to do these grand walls. things. You want to be able to be the next Vince McMahon and challenge Vince McMahon and shit. But at the end of the day, just how he went about it just didn't really help him or help his wrestlers or his promotion as a whole. Like, it's just, yeah. it just floundered as it was probably going to even like look at wcw as much money as they put into shit as much as they did as great as it was for a while like eventually even they they just made issues with money having people do carte blanche shit like and just spending millions of dollars on fucking on the nwo and all the bookers and letting them pretty much do whatever they want it's it it always comes down to management like you guys said and yeah. but if the you don't have thing, the right people managing, that's where you're fucked. The one thing I do like about like that comparison is just the difference of promotion, right? They at least, WCW at least paid people to go. Like the rumor is that they paid people to, to sit in a crowd or they gave away free tickets. I can believe that they gave away free tickets. Give away to, free tickets to start. Like, yeah, like that's the way to go. Like 
What do you like? Just pull people off the street. What do you do? Like, Want to see like, a show for free? Here's a ticket. Come on. Exactly. Like for example, like if you're if if you were going to Impact before, like if you were at um, Orlando, like at the Universal Studios, you'd be able to go in for free, pretty much, right? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Exactly. If, if you pay to like go, that. if you pay to get into Universal Studios, you pay to get into an Impact show. You can walk in and you can walk out. Just mm-hmm. like that, and yeah, there was simple already, things of promotion. Yeah, because it was a back lot, and it's it's a sound stage, so you can just go in the sound stage. Like there's a line, of course, but you can go in. You don't pay when you go in there. It's not paying again. It's not like when you go to the, the gift shop and you have to buy something. You just go in and you go out if you don't like it. That's plain and simple. Like that's all. Like they should have did something like that too. Like I'm sure he could have cut one of those deals. Pocket. Like probably, he could have. Especially with, with playing with people with investors' money and shit like that. So I'm sure he could have. He definitely could have. Um, I mean, are there any other thoughts besides like the coke stuff? Like, <laughs> I think we, I think we covered quite a lot of it actually in a short fucking time. To be honest with you. Yeah, because it was, it was really not that much, but it was a lot of it was repetitive shit that they kept talking about in terms of yeah. like mismanagement and. Coke yeah. and uh, hookers and boots and shit. Yeah, what, what is what is, um, I forget what the, what the exact saying is, but um, doing the same thing over and over is the example of, of insanity. Exactly, and expecting different results. Yeah. Yes, like yeah. that's all it was. It's like this guy yeah. was. It was like really insane for him to do certain things over and over and think that something else was going to happen. Only thing that was going to happen was the only thing different that was was going to happen was <laughs> whoever the plug was was going to come get you. Exactly. <laughs> like that was a crazy story. He was yeah. like he he was going crazy. He started hearing things because of the coke was getting to him. Paranoia, man. Yeah, and, it, was and it definitely was kicking in. And just to hear like, oh, dude was like, like uh, one of the, I guess, I guess. Somebody that might have been the, the hooker's pimp or whatever kicked in the door <laughs> and he jumped out of the which he jumped out of the window and he was running around the, the city naked. Don't blame him. I'd run from the pimp too. <laughs> like if I was in that situation, the fuck? Yeah, well you know, shit. stay there and find your, out what happened. Pay your hooker. <laughs> Mismanage the money and, too. And cash. And you cash. try to give her a check. I mean like, no. She should have taken the check. I'm joking. <laughs> um, no, it's business. But uh, but no, yeah, man. It's just like it's the one thing that that was funny to me is when he took Mick Foley up to the fucking to the suite that he had, and he was like, "Holy shit!" Like, and when he was like, "Oh," he was like, "You think this is something? Wait till you see this. Wait till everybody sees this." And he was talking about like his fucking cowboy boots. I'm like, "Oh why? my god, fucking why? bright yellow!" And and then like. Mick Foley's like, and then I knew, like, what kind of trouble we were in. <laughs> like, I was like, yo, I started laughing my heart. I was like, well, yeah, if that's what he's mainly focused on, then that's what you're pretty much going to get. But um, no, man, it was it was a weird episode and it was fun to learn. But at the same time, it's just like you see a lot of the things that went wrong that probably shouldn't have gone wrong if you just had the right people around you. And the right management team. But the thing was, he didn't really have anybody in the industry like that that really, or knew at least him, like he knew him, him. Exactly. or even res- or even respected him. Like that's where the main thing comes from. Like AEW is is doing a great first year and a half at this point because how much respect that they have. Yeah, just based on other promoters. Other wrestling companies, other like just everyone, like okay, cool. You have a billionaire backing you, a billionaire and his son backing you, but you still have the respect of everybody. And that's the other thing, like the billionaire is backing you, and the billionaire trusts you, the people from the wrestling industry, because the the billionaire owner is a fan, but he doesn't know how to run this shit. Obviously, like he knows how to run a football team, he knows how to run a soccer club. But like at the same time, it's just you have to know when to have when to be able to delegate. Like, okay, yeah. I'm giving you the cash, 
you run this shit. You got to have a general manager. And that's yeah, why you true. have the EPs. That's why they're doing so well with the thing because, like, he left it to the wrestling people to take care of the wrestling operations. And that's the thing. You bring in Chris Jericho. He's been in the game for damn near fucking 30 years. You bring in Kenny Omega, fucking, like, Cody Rhodes and the Young Bucks, like, they know what they, they've been in the business for how fucking long. So, like, who better to start off? Like, don't get me wrong. You're going to have growing pains. But at the same time, they're way further ahead than most people would have thought they would have been. Oh, yeah. They thought they, like, honestly, everyone thought that they were just going to be in the Hammerstein forever. Mm-hmm. Everybody just thought they were doing 2,500,000 seats. That was it. 2,500, I mean, that's a lot. Yeah, not that much. Yeah, that's true. Uh, 2,500 <laughs> seats, whatever. Um, well, I think he got caught by the cops. No, I'm joking. Uh, hope not. The shit probably died. The dog. Oh, my God. The dog, Koki. Koki? Oh. It was actually Pokey, but yeah. I thought it was Koki. No, they said he probably call, he called him Koki, but his name was actually Pokey. <laughs> but he called him Koki. Oh man, yeah. Herb was great. I mean, it, it was it was insi- it was uh, English. It was insightful. It was a relatively funny episode, a little out there, but like just to see somebody else try, because like there's probably been multiple people that have tried their hand at challenging Vince. But he just went about it the wrong way. I mean, yeah. anybody that wants to be the next Vince, but you just got to be able to do it right. So, yeah. I mean, do we have any final thoughts? Because I don't think E's coming back. Um, mm-hmm. Common story is somebody standing in their own way. Definitely. Definitely. Like, you're, you're, so, you're so into what you want, but you're not thinking about everyone else. And it was stubbornness. Yeah. 100%. 100%. I, think, I forgot what they said, but I think it was something along the lines of he thought whatever he liked was going to was gonna be the main goal. Like, yeah. just because it entertained you, you thought it was going to entertain everyone else. Yep. That's not, that's not how life works. Yeah. But he had fun, and like you said at the end, like, you know, he... He died doing the things he loved. He died <laughs> hookers and cocaine. So, like, fuck it. Like, if that's the case, yeah. then, that's I mean, the best. That I can't be the I can't best really, way to go out, though, I as can't far really as if that's how you live life. Exactly. Like, I can't really be too mad at that, about that. But, you know, it's, uh, he, he lived his life the way he wanted to. So, fuck it. Like, you know, I mean, he might have not been successful in accomplishing what he wanted to accomplish, and, like, at least in terms of, like, the wrestling side of things. But, yeah. hey, fuck it. I just like the way that the belt, when you wrapped it and held it, it said F you. That was dope. Yeah, I, was like, that that, was I was like that. I was like, that's smart. I that was that's really smart. great right there. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I thought like, that was really cool. But um, One last thing also. Um, that last video, of, like the last video of him before he passed, mm-hmm. he looked like the cleanest and most at peace he probably ever did. Because he looked sober. Yeah. Looks sober as fuck, and he looked like chill as fuck, and I, he might have just relapsed. Then it probably all got to him. He said, "Fuck it, I need cocaine." Oh shit, hookers, I need that too. And I'm mad they really said he was baby oiled up with coke on. <laughs> <laughs> fuck it. Yeah. There were so many stories, and they all yeah. sound amazing. They do, like, like, like I said, he was just living his shit up, like cocaine or not, uh, hookers or not, like he. He did what he wanted to do. And baby oil, Vaseline, whatever the fuck. Like, he did what he wanted to do and he had fun doing it. And that's what, like, that's what most people said at, at, in the in the documentary. Like, even McFoley, he was just like, if they asked McFoley, like, if he was alive, what do you think he'd be doing right now? He said time. Like, he'd be in jail, but I'd visit him and go have cookies with him. Like, <laughs> like but still Foley having fun. About it. So I'm just like, Foley I'm like, so yeah, I'm like that, that sounds just about right. So. I mean, it's a dude that he tried, he failed, but he was successful in other things. But, like, overall, like, hey, go out, went out on his own terms, I guess, for the most part. So, fuck it. What do you yell in in the middle of the ring? <laughs> Com- like, compar- comparable to him, because what he yelled was, like, just fucking ridiculous. Oh, the, the Jewish statement? <laughs> yes, let's hear it for the, like, come on. I mean, wasn't he Jewish? Yeah. Abrams, yeah, I believe so. Yeah, he was Jewish. I mean, 
That's that's coke fueled fucking rent right there. It's yeah, coke yeah, let's hear, so yeah, it's let's hear it for my people. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, I, mean, I, I have no other words. It's not stupider than the shit we heard last week. So I really can't <laughs> <laughs> about Abraham Lincoln not freeing the wrestlers. So I, <laughs> dude will never live that down. No. Any like, man I, is, is really fucking ridiculous. He should get that tattooed on his fucking arm. <laughs> like, no, he should get a, head, a face tattoo. Running around looking right like, there. Yeah, it just look like Takashi out here. <laughs> <laughs> I think that's the end of the fuck. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you yeah that's, Takashi, that's, that's pretty much it. Um, <laughs> but yeah, uh, thanks for being here. Uh, e left prematurely because I don't know why. We don't know why. Um, hopefully everything's okay. But uh, problems. But uh, thanks for being here, guys. You can follow us on Twitter at Pokes and Chokes. Myself at underscore Mr. Alex twenty five underscore. The other guy on the other side at N U underscore K E W L A. Um, Tevin on Twitter at Anomalous Fringe and on Instagram at Anomalous underscore Enigma. And uh, on Facebook dot com slash Pokes and Chokes, um, Instagram at Pokes Chokes Podcast, and uh, listen to us on Spotify, iTunes, Google, Stitcher, and Transistor. Um, and catch up on YouTube shit. So, thanks for watching. What, what did you forget? We didn't even say how excited we are for the next episode with the Legion of Doom, the Road Warriors. We're excited. <laughs> <laughs> Fucking no, I mean, it's gonna be good. It's gonna be good. It's gonna be good. Yeah, yeah, no, I don't know. I think but this it's more. One, this one was entertaining, but the next one I think it's gonna be really good. I think it's yeah. gonna be more cocaine stories. I hope so. I like cocaine stories. They're the best. But yeah, thanks for watching, and we'll catch you guys next week. And steroids too.